Hello everyone and welcome to Tutor Terrific. Today I'm going to be doing a chemistry video for all you high school students out there or early level college students who are having trouble with electron configuration and orbital notation. Now, uh, matter of fact, I just wanted you to know that this is actually the first time you guys have worked in quantum mechanics because we're actually working with the first four determined quantum numbers. This is the basis for setting up electron configurations and orbital notations in chemistry. Now I just want to make sure you understand that we're talking about the electrons that are orbiting the nucleus of an atom. Now these electrons orbit based on quantum mechanics and so there are certain rules and certain exclusions that apply to where they can be and how much energy they have. Those restrictions are given by the quantum numbers. Now not to get too much into it, I'm just going to explain the quantum numbers and how it relates to these uh, two concepts. N is the principal energy level quantum number and it can take on any of the natural numbers. One, two, three. Usually on the periodic table of elements we only go up to seven. Okay, and those are all radioactive anyway. So that's the first number and you need to know what principal energy level you're dealing with. Next, L is called the angular momentum quantum number. Now we don't think of it as L and we don't number it as L. We look at it as letters. S P D F. Now often these are called sublevels in high school chemistry. And um, there's also a G and an H, but in high school chemistry we don't look at those because they're theoretical. And then ML, the third one, it's called the orbital quantum number. And we just think of it in high school chemistry as an orbital. And each of the orbitals is given a line. Depending on which sublevel you're in, uh, you have a certain number of orbitals. Okay, for example, each S sublevel has one orbital, and each P sublevel has three, each D sublevel has five, and each F sublevel has seven. So uh, we have to keep track of that, and I'll show you how that works. But an orbital are these given uh, by these lines. Okay, these are like houses that uh, the electrons live in. Then we have MS, which stands for the spin quantum number. Now, I'm not going to try and uh, discuss what spin is. It's related to magnetism. However, it can either be spin up or spin down. Those are the only options for spin. Now, how do these all come together in electron configurations and orbital notations? I will explain that here with an example of carbon. On the periodic table, you know that carbon... Uh, has an atomic number of six. That means it has six protons and six electrons, more importantly, in its neutral state. So, this is what an electron configuration for carbon looks like. These large numbers here relate to N, okay? The large coefficients to the letters tell you what principal energy level you are in. And the letters themselves tell you what sublevel you are in. And then we have down here um, the orbital notation. I'll just call that O N for short. This is the orbital notation for this electron configuration for carbon. You can see that the orbitals are drawn as the lines and then the electrons themselves are drawn given their spin. You can see some up arrows and some down arrows and over here you can see just some up arrows. All right, guys. Whoa, there's a lot of information on here. Let me go through it for you. What we have to understand is that the electrons, as we add electrons, meaning uh, we increase our atomic number, the electrons are always, always going to find the configuration that results in the lowest possible energy for each electron. Now, a sort of analogy to that is, what do we tend to default to? the most lazy position we could possibly be in, whether that comes to work circumstances or being at home or chores, what have you. We want to expend the least amount of energy possible. You could directly actually relate that to this concept. But the electrons will do that as well. And so the filling order is not super straightforward because of that. Because these sublevels, S, P, D, and F, have increasingly higher energies associated with them. So, let's go through the filling order without looking at this diagram. I'll explain this diagram in a second. We will start with the lowest principal energy level, which is 1. We will fill number 1 first. Here's the thing. The first principal energy level only has the S sublevel in it. Okay? So, we will fill 
one s first. Then we are completely done with n equals one, the principal energy level, completely done. Next, we will begin with the second principal energy level and we will fill that up entirely. Number two, the principal energy level number two has an S sublevel and a P. It has an extra sublevel, P. So the principal energy level two has S and P sublevels. They will fill in that order. Then we're done with principal energy level two. We will go to principal energy level three, which has an S sublevel, a P sublevel, and a D sublevel. We will start after 2P, we will fill up the S sublevel of um, principal energy level three. Then we will go to 3P and fill that up. Now look what happens. This is the first sort of anomaly, 4S. What in the world? Why would I not fill 3D next? Well, it turns out 4S is a lower total energy level for those electrons. So they will fill 4S first. They will skip 3D. And, uh, well, they won't skip it. They will postpone filling that um, sublevel. So we will fill 4S. And then we will go back and fill the 3D sublevel. Then principal energy level 3 is done. We have started level number 4 right here. Then we will continue with level four, and we will fill 4P, okay? Now, four actually has S, P, D, and F sublevels, but F has such a high overall average energy that it takes forever to get to it in this list. I'll go over that. After 4P, then we skip, uh, we, we postpone filling 4D, and we go to the next principal energy level, five, and we fill its S sublevel. Then we go back and fill 4D. Then we will continue with 5S. We will not do 4F next. We will go back to 5 and fill 5P next. The next highest energy is 6S. And so now we're in the sixth principal energy level. We haven't even finished filling 4 yet, but that's how it goes. 6S is less total energy. So we will fill 6S. Then we will not go back to 5D. 4F squeezes in there, right in between the two. And we fill 4F. Now, principal energy level four is done. Now we will continue trying to finish out five. We will, we've got 5S here, 5P is done here, 5D is next. We will fill those. Then we will go um, and back to uh, six, and we will fill 6P. That's the next highest one, right? Remember we started six here. And it took us to get to here to continue to work on principal energy level six. We will fill the P sublevel next. Then the next, we're going to repeat the pattern that started back here at the next level up. 7S will be next. We will start principal energy level seven, which has all four as well, S, P, D, and F. But we will never get to D or F in the seventh sublevel. And we will never get to 6F as well. So we go to 7S, then we fill 5F. We've got to go all the way back and finish 5 now. Now we've got all of 5 sublevels done. Then we will continue working on 6, fill D, and then we will work on 7P. Now when we get to this point down here in these last couple rows, everything's radioactive, and it's been artificially synthesized on the periodic table. When 7P is filled, that's actually element 118, which um, was just recently discovered. It has like a half-life of uh, maybe a few microseconds, so it's hard to say it actually exists, but it's been named. And um, we're never going to really be working with those configurations at that high atomic number. But let's look at over here, because this was, I'm sure, quite confusing to some of you. It's like, how am I going to remember all that? Well, there are filling order diagrams ad nauseum on the internet, and I have made one for you here. Now, it, what it shows you is a pathway you can follow to fill in the correct order. What I've done first is I've written out in columns the principal energy levels and categorized them by sublevel. So all the S's, 1S through 7S, are in the first column. Then I move over, scoot down one, because uh, principal energy at level 1 doesn't have any other sublevels but S. Scoot down here and write 2P through 7P in the next column. And uh, principal energy level two doesn't have a D or an F either. Then we move to the next row, uh, excuse me, column, 
And um, we're going to work through 3D through 6D. Um, those are actually used on the periodic table. And then the last two that are used on the periodic table are 4F and 5F. Now, as you can see, things kind of uh, look like a triangle on its side a little bit as we start to. Down here, we never get to these. And up here, these don't exist. So this is a filling order diagram. Now, how do I move through it? I draw these diagonal arrows. That's the trick. These diagonal arrows, we start drawing one through 1S, then we turn around with the little dotted line and go to the next arrow, which sends us through 2S. See how it's lining up with the order here? Then we, when we get to the end of this diagonal row, we go back and start the next one. And then we see we're going to go through 2P next and then 3S. The order is matching. Then we're at the end of a row, we go back to the start of the next one, 3P, 4S. So, so far, everything's matching. And then, as you can see, 4S, we didn't go to 3D after 3P. We went to 4S, then we come all the way back around, and we go through 3D, 4P, 5S, come back around, go through next 4D, 5P, 6X. Then we go back around and go through 4F, 5D, 6P, 7S, go back around, 5F, 6D, 7P, directly matching the order you can memorize right there. So this is a super helpful diagram. Now, most of you in high school will have this diagram provided to you. Maybe if you're in college, you won't. So make sure you understand how I just generated that. Go back and watch that again. Start with drawing the columns out, organized by sublevel, numbers increasing as you go down. Then draw the arrows diagonally, like so moving down one step at a time, connecting the arrows with little backing track dotted lines to the next tip of the next, uh, next tail of the next arrow on the way down. Okay, let's try to use this. We will also need to know the following thing. How many electrons, this is electrons, how many electrons are fitting in each sublevel? S sublevel is the smallest and it has two spots for electrons. P is the next largest. It has six spots for electrons. D, next in line, has 10 spots for electrons. And F, the last one in line, has 14 spots for electrons. Okay, let's try to make an electron configuration for these examples. Let's start with an easy one. Carbon. If you look on the periodic table, the atomic number of carbon is six. Again, like I said in the last clip, that means it has six electrons. So let's start filling them in. We will have to start with 1s. How do I write that I can have two electrons in it and they're both in there? I write a little superscript 2 by the sublevel. So what, I, what I've done now is I've filled two electrons in the 1s sublevel. Next, I'm supposed to fill 2s. And there are two spots in each S, so I'm going to put a subscript, excuse me, a superscript 2 there as well. Then it comes time to fill 2P. How many electrons have I filled so far? Well, I count and add the superscripts, not the main coefficients, the superscripts. I have filled four electrons. How many do I have total to fill? Six. The next sublevel is P. I have two left to fill, so I will write 2P. Two. Yes, it is not completely full. The P sublevel is not completely full, and that's just fine. So we have two, four, six. We have the correct number of electrons. We have the correct filling order, and we are done. All right, let's try a harder one. Argon. Argon uh, has an atomic number of 18. Many more electrons going in here. So let's begin. 1s can fill 2 in each s. 2s. Fill two into that one, two P. So P can fit six. If I add two and two to six, I get 10 total. So I'm nowhere near the amount I have to fill. So I have to fill this P entirely, two P six. Next in the filling order is three S. Okay, three S, again, like all the other S's can have two. If you add up all these superscripts now, you can see there's 12 filled in. So I need to keep going to 3P. Since I filled 12 so far, how many more do I have to put in? Six. 
to make 18 total. Aha, that's exactly how many can fit in to the P sublevel anywhere. So now I have finished argon. Next, cadmium, 48. I'm gonna need this entire line to fit this all, okay? 48 electrons. So I'm gonna go through a large list with you and I'm gonna show you how this awkward filling order begins. So, as you can see, we're gonna have this entire argon because it has at least 18 electrons. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. All right, now let's continue, that's 18. 4s2, now we have 20, that's the next one I was supposed to fill. Then if you look at the diagram, I go back and fill 3d. 3d, so I'm at 20 right now. If I fill 3d, that gets me to 30, because d can have 10, okay. That's good, now I have only 18 left. What's next after 3D, guys? 4P. 4P, how many can I fit? Six. That would put me up to 36. I still have more to go to get to 48. What's next after 4P? Guys, look, you'll see it's 5S. 5S can fit two. What does that put me at? 38. Now I only have 10 left. What's after 5S? None other than 4D. How many can fit in D? 10. How many do I need? Exactly 10. Because right now, at this point, if you add up all the subscripts, you'll see I have 38. So I need 48, so I will totally fill that D sublevel. Aha, I have finished cadmium. So this is a, an example. I'm gonna go over a few quirky ones next. Before I show you some of the quirky um, elements in the periodic table that fill a little bit differently. I first want to show you how you can check your work while you're doing an electron configuration using the periodic table. So here's the periodic table without any of the elements put in. I just want to show you what's called the blocks of the periodic table that relate to the sublevels S, P, D, and F. If you're over here in the alkali metals or the alkali earth metals, and that's where your, um, your element is, your last... Uh, electron is going into an S sublevel. This is what's called the S block. Now if you um, look at the periods, period 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, those are the actual um, principal energy levels of your last electron. So if you're, for example, at hydrogen right here, you're filling the 1S um, electron sublevel. So it's quite helpful. In addition, we have the, uh, over here, the transition metal section. This is where the D sublevels are filling, particularly three, four, five, and six in each of those rows. Now these are where some of the quirks happen, but I'll explain that in a minute. So this is called the D block. Down below in the, what's called the inner transition metals or the rare earth metals, these two rows, we are filling the 4F and 5F sublevels. So that's called the F block. And then in this last block over here on the far right, this is where the P sublevels sub -levels are being filled. So this is called the P block. And they are being filled like this. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. These are the blocks. Now the only one that doesn't follow this pattern is helium. Helium is filling its 1S sublevel over there. It's hard to place helium and hydrogen, as you might already know. Also notice that uh, the noble gases over here, that is where you will see a P6, like we did for argon in our uh, last clip. So let's go over the transition metals that are quirky. What do some of these transition metals, and actually some of these rare earth metals, do? Well, it turns out that both the D and the F sublevels do not like to be partially filled in certain ways. They are not stable if they are not half filled, empty, or totally filled. And to the point that sometimes the higher level S sublevel that was filled over here is stolen from, quote unquote, to make the D or F sublevel halfway or whole filled instead of filled partially to some other fraction. Um, that is overall less energy because it is more stable.
the transition metals in particular that behave this way are Cr for chromium, Cu for copper, um, Nb, Mo, Ru, Rh, Pd. That's palladium. Palladium is extra weird because palladium steals not only one S but two S's to fill the D sublevel. Silver, Ag, platinum, Pt, Au for gold, and Ds, which is way down here, Darmstadtium which is a totally unstable element that was recently discovered. Okay, let's look at two of these examples. First, chromium and then palladium. So since we are in the D block, we are going to, chromium's over here and palladium's down here, we are going to finish by filling that D sublevel. Now, let's go over this. Chromium will actually steal one S electron from the S sublevel before it. So let's keep that in mind. The filling order's over here, let's begin. <clears throat> 24 electrons, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, following the order. Next would be 3s2, and then 3p6. How many electrons do we have so far? 2, 4, 10, 12, 18. Only six more. So, four, what you would naturally do is do 4s2, and then 3d, how many left? Four. So we do 3D4. 3D4 is a very notoriously unstable configuration. Four electrons in the D sublevel. So what's going to happen here is that one of these 4S electrons will go into the D to make it D5. So now we will have 4S1, 3D5. Matter of fact, that is more stable than 4S2, 3D4. Almost all elements in that area. Um, avoid 3D4 and 3D9 in particular. <clears throat> so that's chromium. Now let's try palladium. 46 total electrons. I'm going to need this entire space. So let's begin. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. Let's just check and see how far we are. 2, 4, 10. 18, 28, 30. Okay, we have 16 left. What's after 3D10? 4P6. So where are we at now? <clears throat> 4, 10, 18, 20, 30, 36. 10 more. 10 more. So next on the list is 5S2. Okay, so that's uh, that makes 8 more. And then we would expect 4D8. Here's the problem. This is also unstable. 4D8 is not stable. Palladium wants it to be a full D sublevel, so it wants it to be D10. Where's it going to take those electrons from? From 5S. 5S now has zero electrons in it, and we completely erase it. And 4D now has 10 electrons in it. This is a totally odd one out, palladium. All the other transition metals at least keep one electron in the next highest level, S sublevel. All right, guys, I'm going to do one last example for you. It's going to be like the major test because it's PB. Does anybody know what PB stands for? Lead. Lead has 82 electrons. So this is going to be a long process. So we're going to start just as normal, and I'll speed through this first part until we get close to 82. Okay, here we are. We went all the way through this entire section of the diagram, and we ended up at around 6P. Right now, guys, I have 10, 20, 30, 38, 48, 54, 56, 70, 80, 82. I need two more, and they're going to go right here. Lead is right in the middle of the P block, 6P2. Okay, guys. Wow. Electron configurations, when you get used to them, they're quite interesting and they're quite fun to do, but you have to know the filling order and how many electrons can fit in each sub-level. 
So guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the orbital notation in a part two video, which you'll see very soon. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Falconator signing out.